So by now you've created your own religion, or perhaps you've taken up one of the fake gods listed in some dungeon master's guide somewhere. Well, now what? Religions aren't boring, academic, like studying to be a dentist. Religions have actual everyday applications in people's lives. And one of the most fun is the holidays. In religions and society in general take on several different aspects. The first is just a simple rest. Back in the day, people lived very harsh lives, never knowing if this year there'd be a famine or perhaps you'd be invaded or maybe you'd just die of frostbite and your dogs would eat your toes in your sleep. Societal enforced rest from these labors really made people happy. And there you have some of the holidays. Most religions have a specific day of rest. For Christians, it's Sunday. For Jews, it's Saturday. And for Muslims, it's Friday. Many other religions will also have a specified day of rest, whether it's weekly, monthly, or yearly. Another way we celebrate is by marking significant events. These events are often significant in the life of your God, or perhaps in one of its followers, or it could just mark a specific occurrence that fits in. So for example, Halloween. Halloween, which was originally called All Hallows Eve, starts the period where we mark saints entering heaven. It also, in other religions, can be where the boundary between the world of the living and the dead is the thinnest and the dead are able to come back and contact the living. And we celebrate that by women wearing slutty costumes. You also have Christmas, which marks the birth of Jesus, who is God for Christians. And we celebrate that by women wearing slutty Christmas costumes. Another reason for religious celebrations is often giving thanks to the God or some spirits for its help in achieving certain things. It could be the victory of a battle against your enemies. It could be for the bountiful harvest. And there's no way to say thank you to a God more than by overeating to the point of vomiting out all that extra food that you were given. Costumes and feasting and partying is often part of what holidays are about, but there can also be other things. It could be days of obligation where you have to go out and make sacrifices to your God. You have to pay your tithe. A tithe is a certain percentage of your income that you would have to give to your God. It could be a service. Maybe you have to enter the temple and become an adjunct priest for a couple of weeks. It could be that you have to go to your relative's house and put up with what your drunk uncle thinks is the correct political views. Other ways to celebrate holidays are by having sporting festivals, marking an event, or perhaps battle reenactment. Yes, that means cosplay. So pray your characters do not worship an animal god or you will have furries. Instead of giving direct sacrifices to your god, perhaps it's giving sacrifices and gifts to other members of its congregation. Giving out Christmas gifts, giving out food or alms or doing services or wives wearing slutty Christmas costumes for their husbands. The best way to go about holidays is figuring out how much of an influence your religion has on the daily life. Are we talking about a secret God where people go out into the woods to be alone to worship? Well, perhaps there's fairly few holidays and maybe they're best kept hidden and your players don't want other people to find out that they celebrate, even though celebrating is a must. Or maybe this is the main God of your land where everything shuts down for several days and well, your players can't take enemies into the local jail. They can't start quests because they can't officially be given one. And it's full of drunken debauchery and role reversal where slaves beat their masters. Good times, folks. Good times. By adding some of these into your campaign, it can really add a lot of flavor. And the best way is by coming up with a calendar first. 
you have a calendar for your game, right? If you don't, go check out this other video I made to see what it's all about. But go through and add several holidays to your calendar. At least one a season, but often several. You'll have big holidays, you'll have small holidays. Christmas is a time when everyone gives gifts to everyone else. Valentine's Day is a time when men suffer. St. Patrick's Day is all about drinking. By adding these to your calendar ahead of time, your players have something to look forward to. It also gives them certain deadlines. Like, hey, we better kill this dragon real quick and get back in time for the drunken bacchanalia. In addition to activities like getting drunk and giving gifts or making sacrifices, remember this will also be a time for people who are proud of their religion to show their colors. And I mean that literally. If there's certain colors associated with the god or colors associated with the holiday at least, they are certain to wear them. Like when women wear sexy Santa outfits. The red and white. You're also gonna have an influx of people wearing religious symbols. Whatever that may be. Crosses, stars, pictures of trees or animals, whatever floats your religion's boat. So thanks for checking out the series. We will have more ways to fix sucky religions in D&D soon. And hey, if you want to find some religions that don't suck, check out Empire of the Undying Sun. It's my campaign, which will be launching later this year. Check a link in the description below to get some info on it. See you all soon. See you real soon.